And truth be told, many of us, many of us, we would love to journey into deep places with God, wouldn't we? But if we were to go on that journey right now, it would be too much for us. We wouldn't get very far because a lot of us are tired and exhausted and we're running all the time. Um, when he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there. So notice he, he was traveling with a servant. He leaves him um, in Beersheba and he went a day's journey into the wilderness. We talked about this a little bit last week, that the word in the, in the New Testament to describe the wilderness or the desolate place or the deserted place or the quiet place is the Eremos. And so you see Elijah's moving into the wilderness. He's moving into the Eremos uh, to be with God. And it says this, he came to a broom bush, sat under it and prayed that he might die. What is going on? Is anyone else like, what in the world is happening right now? Like you're reading this, you just heard about, and you've seen God do so many amazing things, and now you're running from your life from a, a crazed woman, and, and you're going into the wilderness and just saying, God, like, just take my life. Just take it. I don't want to do this anymore. It's kind of crazy, right? Like, I mean, it just doesn't seem like it's the same story. It says, this is what Elijah says. He says, I've had enough, Lord. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the, the bush and fell asleep. At once an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. He looked around and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals in a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, get up. Uh, and, and eat or the journey, it'll be too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank and strengthened by the food. He traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. There he went into a cave and spent the night. Now, this is a really fascinating story to me because, of, again, just kind of a lot of the stuff that we've already talked about. And I, and, and there's this, there's this idea in my head as I read this, like, I'm like, man, like, at first, I'm like, Elijah, you are just a scaredy cat wimp coward. That's what you are. And, and I'm kind of getting irritated, Elijah, at this. And then I start to hear him actually pour out his heart a little bit. And then I start to have a little bit of empathy and compassion for where he's at. Because to be honest, I, I've never got to the point where like, I'm like, God, like, just take my life. But I've definitely wanted to quit. Anyone else? Like I, and, I, and I think that's what Elijah is really getting at is he's like, hey, if I have to keep doing this, you might as well just kill me because I would rather not do this anymore. I just want to quit. I just want to give up, right? And I don't know about you, but my guess is you can resonate with that. Like you're just ready to be done. You're ready to quit. You're ready to give up, right? And what you realize as you go through this story is that Elijah's having a really hard time. The further and further you get, you realize he's struggling, struggling with with his calling, he's struggling with his faith, he's struggling with his loneliness, he's struggling with, with depression, right? All things I think you and I can relate with fairly well. But what does God do for Elijah here? What does God do? Does he come and speak to him? Elijah, you know, does he like call him out of a burning bush or anything? No. Does he encourage him? He's like, hey, buddy, you're doing great. Keep it up. Does he give him some inspiring halftime speech? Like, hey, I know we're down right now, but we're going to come back. Does he remind him of his goodness? Don't you remember how good I've been to you over and over and over again? Remind him of that. Does he ream him? Does he call him a coward? <laughs> right? Does he point out his shortcomings? No. What does he do? You guys know? You guys, you guys remember what it said? He let him sleep. Wait, hold on. What? God just let him take a nap? Yep. Well, then what does he do? He feeds him some food. It's like, what? He just feeds him some food? He lets him take a nap and then feeds him some food? It's like, I don't know if you guys know this, but you will die if you don't sleep or you don't eat. So what is he doing? Elijah wants to die. What is he saying? I'm not going to let you die. I'm not going to let you die. 
But I'm going to give you what you most need. And what you most need right now is you need some sleep. And you need some food. What does he do after he gets some food? He lets him sleep again. <laughs> now at this point, this is the point where I'm starting to question God, right? I was questioning Elijah at the beginning of the story. Now I'm starting to question God a little bit. He's like, well, what are you going to do? What, what are you going to do now, God? Like, now's the time, right? You let him sleep now. He's going to wake up from his nap. Now's the time to give him the speech, right? What does he do? He gives him more food. At this point, I am like reading the story, and I am absolutely so mad at God. Can I just be honest with you? Like, I'm so mad at God. I'm just like, God, why don't you deal with this guy's pain? Like, could you just like do something to make him feel better, please? Or if you're not going to do that, call him a coward and get him motivated and back out in the field. Like, let's go. You know, like I wanted to do something. And God's not doing anything. He's just letting him take a nap and feeding him a bunch of carbs. It's annoying. <laughs> right? Anyone else feel this way? It's okay to feel this way, by the way, when you read the Bible. But here's the important thing that I don't think that we can miss is he's doing what's most important for Elijah. He may seem like he's being very passive right now, but he's actually being very active and he's actually coming in and, and giving Elijah exactly what he needs. Because Elijah has come out to him. And I love how Elijah comes out to him. This is the invitation of solitude, by the way. He comes out to him with what is. Not what should be or what could be or what might be, but what is. He says, this is where I'm at, God. This is where I'm at. And God takes him as he is. Takes him as he is and gives him what he needs most. He's exhausted. He's tired. He's been working for years. Do you realize this? Years doing the work of the Lord. And ministry has gotten him absolutely beat to death. He is exhausted. He has nothing left in the tank. And, he, and he's looking for like God to just do away with all of it. And, and God just says, well, let me just give you some rest. Let me feed you some food. Let me take care of your, limit, your, your, your limits. See, there's something um, really key in this um, is that God understands Elijah's humanity is a limitation. That he needs food. He needs sleep in order to continue to go. And the angel even says this. The second time he comes to feed Elijah, he says, he comes back to him the second time, he feeds him, he gives him something to eat, and he says, eat this and drink this, for the journey is too much for you. And truth be told, many of us, many of us, we would love to journey into deep places with God, wouldn't we? But if we were to go on that journey right now, it would be too much for us. We wouldn't get very far. Because a lot of us are tired and exhausted and we're running all the time and right now if you're in that spot and you find yourself in that spot you're a jar of shaken up river water and what the invitation of solitude is is not to like hey come away and let's study the bible together and hey let's come away and let's let's spend a lot of time in prayer together all of that stuff is great and it will come it will come but at first, we must just be still long enough to let the sediment settle and let things become clear so we can hear and experience God in a deep and meaningful way. In Mark chapter 6, Jesus, uh, he sends out his disciples. Uh, he sends out his disciples and says, go like into the world preaching and teaching the gospel. And uh, it's really a, a really cool kind of a scene he gives authority to his disciples to go cast out demons. It's an amazing, amazing thing. And they are doing amazing things. They could never have done until they met Jesus, until Jesus had become a part of their life. They're doing amazing, amazing work. And it is just one of the most beautiful, beautiful scenes we see. They come back to Jesus. And when they come back, they find out that one of their really good friends, John the Baptist, has just been beheaded and killed. And so think about the disciples and where they're at. They're in this place of like, man, they're in like this amazing, amazing spiritual high. And then, and then they find themselves in this also kind of lull of a low of like someone close to us just died. And like they're in the midst of all of this. 
and there are people coming and going day in and day out, rushing from one thing to another, and, and they return home and they begin to tell Jesus about all the stuff that they've done. And this is, this is what Jesus says. And I want to I share this with you. But this is, this is the invitation. It's the invitation that you are given by Jesus that I think we need to accept and we need to, to grab a hold of um, as we go to practice solitude as a church. Because I think if we embrace this invitation, God will meet us there in a really powerful way. But it says this in, in Mark chapter 6, verse 31 says then, because so many people were coming and going that they didn't even have a chance to eat, he said to them, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Here's the truth, is that if you come in here today and you feel like life is really frantic, it's fast-paced, it's busy, you jump from one thing to another, you run your kids from one activity to another, you're moving from the time the alarm goes off until your head hits the pillow at night, I want you to know the invitation is to come away with Jesus by yourself to a quiet place and get some rest. If you're depressed and you feel like life is too much and you, can't just, you just can't keep going, that you're ready to give up, you're juggling all of life's demands, you feel like more of a machine than a human, Jesus' invitation is to come away to a quiet place with him and get some rest. If you're experiencing breakthroughs at work and in your personal life and everything seems like a God win. Everywhere you turn, God is just blessing you and doing amazing things and you have such a good testimony to share. And well, you know, the invitation in that season is also to get away with Jesus and to a quiet place and get some rest. Maybe you're dealing with the loss of a, of a, of a loved one or a close friend. Or maybe you're dealing with the loss of a parent who's still alive, but they just, they don't recognize you anymore. I want you to know, even in that season, Jesus' invitation is to come away with him to a quiet place by yourself and get some rest. Can we accept this invitation? Can we venture into solitude, into the Aramos to be with Jesus? If we do, I think he can change us and transform us in a way that not only gives gives us rest for our body, but gives us rest for our mind and gives us rest for our souls for the sake of others. For the sake of others. But if we don't, if we don't accept the invitation, my guess is, like Elijah, this journey is going to be too much for us.